please don't do it. Please, my friends, don't do it. Please don't allow the Senate to rot from within. The American people deserve better. I ask unanimous consent, Madam President, that the Committee on Rules and Administration be discharged from further consideration, and the Senate now proceed to S. Res. 623, my resolution that I just talked about. Further, that the resolution be agreed to, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Madam President, the senator from Louisiana is my friend. We throw that term around here in the Senate, but it's, mean, it's true. I think he would say the same. We both serve on the Senate Judiciary Committee. <clears throat> we've worked on issues together. We've been adversaries, but we've done it respectfully, and I will continue that, I hope, this day. But the gentleman, the senator from Louisiana brings to the floor of the Senate and to this debate special qualities. He sounds many times like a homespun, backwoods lawyer. Don't be fooled. He's a graduate of a famous university in England. I've forgotten which one. Oxford, Cambridge, one of those. It's, they're not in the Big Ten, I'm sure of that. But I know they're in England, and I congratulate you. I was never even considered for a university of that stature. He's a brilliant lawyer and senator and raises important questions, not just for the moment, but for history. The question before us today that he's raising is about the purported impeachment, I should say actual impeachment, of a member of President Biden's cabinet, Mr. Mayorkas, head of the Homeland Security Department. And that has now been, is about to be reported to the Senate, and we have constitutional responsibilities when it is reported. In this situation, we are waiting for the actual report to arrive. I think it will be momentary, perhaps this week or next, and we will take up this matter as we are required to do. The House Homeland Committee engaged in a year-long investigation of Secretary Mayorkas and his alleged maladministration of the border of the United States. This committee in the House held 12 hearings testimony from more than two dozen witnesses, producing nearly 400 pages of reports. The Senate, when sitting as a court of impeachment, is not responsible for making the case on behalf of the impeachment managers. We are the jury. We are the ones who will decide the impeachment. Our duty is to make the determination based on the articles of impeachment and the facts at hand. We are not a fact-finding operation. My friend from Utah is also on the, st on the floor. During the first Trump impeachment said, and I quote, the Senate, here sitting as a court of impeachment, has both the authority and the obligation to decline to hold a full trial where the material facts of the case are not in dispute, end of quote. The facts are not in dispute here. This is the first time that the House has successfully impeached a sitting cabinet level official without providing any evidence of a high crime or misdemeanor. None. All those hearings, all those pages, all those witnesses, no evidence of high crimes or misdemeanor. And that is a requirement under the Constitution. The articles of impeachment that will be before us contain zero evidence that Secretary Mayorkas has committed high crimes and misdemeanors. Instead, they can be read as a summary of Republican grievances with this administration's approach to border policy, immigration, detention, and methods of removal and parole, all of which is conduct that falls squarely within the executive branch's constitutional prerogatives. Fortunately, the Constitution was designed to prevent this type of partisan politics driving this effort 
from contaminating the extraordinary process of impeachment. The delegates to the Constitutional Convention considered and rejected the concept of maladministration as an impeachable offense, in part because they feared the misuse of impeachment for purely political retribution. The Constitution empowers the Senate to have the sole power to try all impeachments and to determine the rules of its proceedings, but the Senate only has the power to convict, remove, and disqualify officers whose conduct meets the constitutional standard. That standard is well known to all members of Congress, and the Senate particularly. Given that the Senate only has the power to convict, remove, and disqualify officers who, are committed, who have committed, quote, treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, end of quote, the appropriate Senate response to impeachment articles that do not articulate that change, those charges, is obvious. If congressional Republicans were genuinely interested in addressing concerns about our border, they should be willing to work on a bipartisan basis to pass legislation fixing our broken immigration system and give this president and Secretary Mayorkas the tools they've asked for to address the situation at the southern border. I want to make sure this is clear on the record. The border is broken. It needs to be fixed. What we should do and what we did do is to establish a bipartisan committee. The Republicans said, we insist that James Langford, a respected senator from the state of Oklahoma, speak for us and negotiate for us when it comes to changing the rules at the border. We agreed with that. Senators worked with Senator Langford, whom I respect, and came up with a bipartisan proposal that gave new authority to the president and to the executive branch to deal with the crisis at the border. What happened on the Republican side of the aisle when James Langford, the Republican senator from Oklahoma, came up with this proposal? All but seven of them, I believe that was the number, walked away from him and said they wouldn't support it. Why did they do that? You know why they did it. Because Donald Trump announced that he wanted no part of any agreement, any bipartisan effort to solve the problem. And then former President Trump said, and blame me. Well, I am blaming him. We had an opportunity to actually do something on the floor of the Senate when it came to the border. He stopped it. And so many of the Republican senators who begged us to work with Senator Langford turned their backs on him after the yeoman effort he put into this undertaking. That's the reality. We had our chance on a bipartisan basis and still do to resolve this problem rather than engage in any political stunt. Instead, the vast majority of Republicans, including the junior senator from Utah and others on the floor, recently blocked a bipartisan border reform bill that was written by the Republicans' designated negotiator, Senator Langford. They had their chance. It didn't work. Neither will this. I object. The United States House of Representatives. The United States House of Representatives has found, after a lengthy investigation, that the chaos at the southern border is man-made. And the United States House of Representatives Representatives has alleged that that man's name is Secretary Mayorkas. We need to hold a trial. Now, Senator Durbin is my good friend, and as usual, he is eloquent. And he sounds very confident that the evidence will exonerate Secretary Mayorkas. How does he know? He hasn't heard the evidence, and he doesn't want to hear the evidence because he's scared that the American people might disagree. That's what this is all about. Raw, gut politics. The date was June the 27th, 2013, and on the floor of the United States Senate, we had done something that no one believed could be achieved. We had, through the Gang of Eight, established a comprehensive immigration reform bill. I was part of that Gang of Eight. 
eight senators, four Democrats, and four Republicans who labored for months to create that legislation. It was comprehensive, as, as I noted. It covered every aspect from border all the way through the immigration process. We brought it to the floor in the hopes that for the first time in decades, we would finally reach an agreement, a bipartisan agreement. The people who were involved in it, John McCain on the Republican side, Senator Flake from Arizona, Senator Graham from South Carolina, and four, four Democrats worked hard to bring this to the floor. It was an opportunity for us to finally do something together. It got 68 votes. We needed 60. We got 68 votes. There was a lot of celebration because business and labor and others were supporting us and I'm so happy that we got it done. We know what happened to that bill. It went over and died in the House of Representatives. The Republican leadership over there refused to even call it for consideration. Of the Republican senators currently on the floor, two of them were on the floor on June 27, 2013. They both voted no. Listen to the speeches and ask yourself the question, if the border and immigration policy need to be fixed in America, why weren't you there when we had a chance for a bipartisan approach to comprehensive immigration reform? And to make it even worse, there was an argument made that we would not provide defense supplemental spending asked for by the administration around the world unless we came up with a border re reform bill within the last uh, several months. And the Republicans said, we have a leader on our side of the aisle that we want to head up our effort to come up with a bipartisan bill to deal with the border. We do believe it needs to be fixed. It is in crisis. They proffered James Lankford, a conservative Republican senator from Oklahoma, a highly respected senator. I may disagree with him on many issues, but I respect him as a member of the Senate. He was to be their lead negotiator, and we respected that request. The Democrats had Chris Murphy and Kirsten Sinema joining in the effort and brought to the floor, or prepared to bring to the floor, a measure that was a bipartisan approach to solve this problem. Why is that necessary? Because in this body you need 60 votes. If you don't have 60 votes, you're wasting your time. We needed something bipartisan. And so this measure was headed to the floor. And at the last minute, former President Donald Trump announced that he wanted to stop the process. He did not want to even attempt to solve the problem with bipartisan legislation. He said, you can blame me if you want to. And I blame him again. Yes, he did that. And unfortunately, the Republican senators were complicit, most of them, in that effort instead of respecting what James Langford had achieved and what a bipartisan bill would have made. So you can say what you want and make all the speeches about bodies and suffering, and I'm sure that most of some of that's true. But the bottom line is when you had a chance to do something about it with the bipartisan gang of eight bill, you voted no. And when you had a chance to support James Langford's bipartisan approach to fixing the border, you were not there to be seen. You were loyal to Donald Trump and not loyal to the situation that we face in the Senate. I object. Madam President. Objection is heard. Senator from Texas.